Hey, Diane Danchi with Rex Nutrition Services. I'm delighted to be with you today and to share what is a really fun entree salad that may be very different for some of you. So the question is, how many of you have heard of the grain quinoa? It's an ancient grain. It's been a staple in South America for millennia. In the last several years, it's caught hold in the United States. One of the reasons we love this grain is that it's unusual because it's the only grain that is a complete protein, which means it gives you all the essential amino acids that your body cannot make. We're gonna make a quinoa salad today. It's packed with vegetables. It's got a just a taste bud grabbing, tangy dressing. And with the grain and the beans that are in it and the feta cheese, it's high in protein. Makes a wonderful entree salad. The other thing I love about it is it holds in the refrigerator for several days. So it can be a meal prep queen. You make it once and you can eat on it for several days. So first thing I wanna teach you is um, how to cook this grain of quinoa. It is a very tiny grain and you need to start by rinsing it because it has a residual coating on it that can be very bitter or soapy tasting. Unlike a lot of grains, Quinoa goes in the water before you start the cooking process. Other grains, you get the water boiling, but not this. So you're gonna rinse it, add it to the water, and it is um, a ratio of one to two. So if you're doing a half a cup of quinoa, it's a cup of water, two, a cup of quinoa, two cups of water. So we're gonna get our pan boiling and um, get that quinoa cooked. Once that quinoa has finished cooking, and remember when it's done, it needs to be dry. It needs to be light and fluffy. If there's a lot of residual of water left, it's gonna make for a gooey salad. Salad. So once it's cooked, you need to chill it completely and that will help make it a really dry texture. And that's gonna make your salad much lighter than if it's extra moist. To this, we're going to add a cup of sliced grape tomatoes. And I have to confess, Often I will use more of the veggies than the recipe calls for just because I think they lighten it. So that can be a, a personal taste issue for you. And then we've got a cup and a half of diced English cucumbers. And I love the baby English cucumbers. And I leave some of the green on because it adds to the beautiful color of this. A can of chickpeas that have been rinsed and drained. And again, this is where you're getting some of the protein. And then you need about a quarter of a cup of either minced shallots or preferably a sweet onion. And you do need to be careful about the onion you put in here because if it's too strong, it can really overpower this salad. I started with shallots and they were too strong, so I actually found something in the genre of a Vidalia onion and it was much better to deal with. So all those ingredients, and just mix it up. Isn't it beautiful? All the colors. You, again, you're getting protein from the beans and from the quinoa. So we're gonna let that set for a second while we mix our dressing. Okay, now this tangy, as I said, taste bud grabbing salad dressing, um, it, it just makes the salad. And I think what makes the tang is the combination of fresh lemon juice and red wine vinegar. I don't have another salad dressing that has it in and I love it in this. So it's two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, a quarter of a cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice, and please squeeze it fresh. The bottled stuff just will not fly in this. About three quarters to a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And this recipe calls for a little bit of honey and it really does help with the flavor. A honey tip, if you're measuring honey in a cup or in a measuring spoon, give it a light spray of cooking oil or cooking spray, pan spray, and it does help that pop out of the spoon a little bit more easily. I always do it with my measuring cups. Nice clean spoon. And those are the salad ingredient recipes, along, or salad recipe ingredients, along with one third of a cup of extra virgin, first cold pressed, preferably olive oil. And want to give that a whisk around. It doesn't have to be super well blended because it'll get blended more in the bowl. But when you are doing a salad dressing, you at least want to try to incorporate the oil into it. 
and it's going to coat everything in the um, salad of just a little bit better. So let's dress the salad. And at this point, you also add some greens. The recipe, the original recipe called for kale. I don't like the real hearty kale in this. I've tried baby kale, which is wonderful because it's tender. And it also works well with some coarsely chopped baby spinach. Both the baby kale and the baby spinach make it really good. And then just mix all that together. The colors are coming out, the flavors, I can smell the tangy salad dressing and it's just really, really a fun dish. And to top it off, we have somewhere between a half and a cup of feta cheese. When I put feta on, I don't put it on at the end. It's beautiful, but at the end, it can kind of ruin the appearance of a salad. And we love to cook and present with beauty. A few more sliced cherry tomatoes, a few more chopped cucumbers, just to really add that color at the top, and last about a quarter of a cup of slivered almonds. And there you have it. Enjoy. <laughs>